Hi there and welcome to the 2010 show brought to you by IT Business Campus. This week marks 500 days ahead of the start of the 2010 FIFA World Cup to be held on African soil for the first time ever. A host of functions were held around the country to mark the special occasion. But before we go there, let's take a look at what's on the show today. Brazilian superstar takes us to where his career started. Sir Alex Ferguson and a host of Premiership stars give their opinion on South Africa's ability to host the 2010 FIFA World Cup. And of course, we'll bring you all the colour, glamour and excitement ahead of the biggest sports event in the world. Now, barring injury, Brazilian superstar Rubinho is a virtual certainty to represent the five times World Cup winners next year. Can you imagine watching him live inside the new Greenpoint Stadium being built right here behind me? Well, that gets me excited already. Now, next, we're going to show you a feature that has never been shown locally before. It takes you to the roots of Brazilian superstar Rubinho. Eu acho que é a alegria do povo brasileiro, né? O povo brasileiro já nasce com arte. É o brasileiro jogando bola, né? O Brasil já nasce com a gina, já nasce com a capuzão, todo mundo com o time grande, né? Eu esperava que fosse o Santos, assim, o time que jogou muitos craques, né? E o time do rei do futebol. Obrigado pela visita aí. Nada, que isso, uma honra. Como é que tá? Tá a camisa Tô da Celeste aí, né? Sabe quem deu, né? Você saiu. Não, aqui, aqui tá o filme do Robinho. Assim. Ele não tinha medo de ir pra cima do adversário. O negócio dele era de branco fazer gol. Olha aí, de volta a quadro, Robson. Ele sabe tudo. O Robinho era que dava o charme, o gibre dele. Porque o futebol, sem um gibre, sem uma caneta, sem um chapéuzinho, o pessoal ia embora. Aí começaram a passar os nossos jogos pro segundo ao terceiro. Por quê? Pra segurar o público. É, o Betinho às vezes ele falava pra mim, pô, não é só jogar futebol, tem que ter o um molejo, às vezes também saber sambar, ele brincava muito comigo. Olha o Robson, olha o Robson, vai tentar o segundo. É gol! É a festa, é a alegria do futebol em salão. E o que, que você tá sentindo agora? Muita alegria, né? É. Quantos anos você tem? Oito. Oi, mãe, mãe. 
Tô na entrevista aqui, já te ligo já. É difícil você ver um brasileiro que não saiba jogar bola. É que alguns têm a oportunidade de apresentar seu futebol, de um profissional, outros já não têm, que outros às vezes acabam não tendo a oportunidade de jogar futebol porque tem que trabalhar para ajudar sua família. Mas acho que todo brasileiro sabe jogar futebol. Dia, né? A alegria de jogar futebol desde de pequeno eu tenho até hoje. Eu que gosto de ver o Falcão jogar, jogador de raciocínio rápido, né? É uma escola ainda, mas hoje o futsal também é uma opção, né? Hoje cresceu bastante, virou bem profissional. Olha, eu me divirto muito jogando futebol, né? Tenho o mesmo prazer que quando eu era garotinha, né? Eu me diverti de jogar futebol. No começo eles falavam muito pra mim, né? Eu era muito franzino e ia levar dificuldade. Eu nunca tive dificuldade nenhuma, né? Sempre joguei pra frente, fugindo da marcação. Mas eu acho que hoje em dia o futebol tá ganhando mais força, né? A maioria dos jogadores são fortes. Mas eu acho que a força nunca vem sem inteligência, né? Se você for mais inteligente, não tem como o zagueiro te pegar. Now, in my opinion, Rubinho is one of the best footballers on the planet. In recent days, he's been making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Now, I can tell you, I saw Rubinho live at the 2006 FIFA World Cup in Germany, and it's a hair-raising experience. Now, Rubinho and Brazil will be in South Africa later this year for the FIFA Confederations Cup. Unfortunately, there will be no matches taking place here in the mother city. Anyway, here is the full FIFA Confederations Cup schedule.
Recently, Manchester United and Portsmouth were on pre-season tours to South Africa and they had first-hand experience of South Africa's football facilities. So here's the impression on South Africa's ability to host the 2010 FIFA World Cup. South African is, is is been known as as a very a very good country with a culture. So for them hosting the, the World Cup 2010, they deserve they deserve it. You know, uh, like I said, it's it's a country of, of great history. So and I think for us Africans also, it's, it's it's a very good thing for us because it's first time World Cup is coming, senior World Cup is coming to Africa. So it's a very good thing, and I uh, you know that uh, South Africa have the, the capacity to, to host it without, without any doubt. I would say uh, they are up for it. Uh, they got the equipment, they got everything, and uh, they are set. So we all fellow African countries have to support them and be behind them. And uh, that's what we are doing. They are the perfect host, and uh, I wish they would do it. You're very proud being an African with the World Cup happening here. Do you think you'll still be playing in the World Cup? Um, nobody knows. Um, no player can tell you what uh, tomorrow can bring. Also in life, you don't know what tomorrow can bring. But all the same, you only wish and hope and pray that you can make it. You know, I've been so impressed with Cape Town and everything about the place. I just, I don't see any reason that, um, from what I've seen, why it shouldn't be a great venue for a World Cup. Now the new Greenpoint Stadium being built right here behind me, as you can see, is drastically altering the Mother City's skyline and is due for completion in December this year. Now let's take a look at a collage of the stadium construction since it started.
very good. I think uh, I've always said that Adidas make the best football. So uh, you know, to have this ball for the World Cup, it's going to be uh, it's going to be incredible. You know, kicking about today in training with it has been has been good. All the players have been impressed, and uh, you're passing the ball, you're controlling the ball, you're shooting of the ball. You know, it's going in one direction. That's what that's what you need. And uh, you know, it's it's a very classic looking ball. I think that's the way ball should be made. And you know, at the end of the day, black and white is. All about football. We are able to make uh, even rounder balls, more homogeneous balls, because the design is kind of interlocking. You know, so they really fall into place. There's perfect match from the panels. So the, this kind of turbine-shaped panel, they surround the, the propeller-shaped panels. So there's a kind of interlocking mechanism. Uh, whereas, I mean, the pentagonal and the hexagonal panels, they just have a straight line. So this is certainly an advantage. Eu gostei da, da reação da bola, ela sai com, com grande força e bastante efeito. Eu acho que para o goleiro não vai ser muito fácil, mas para nós atacantes é, é muito bom. On peut dire que en fait c'est un ballon qui qui est peut-être à la limite quand quand on le frappe qui va dans une bonne direction. Mais c'est vrai que ça, ça, ça se joue à très peu de choses. C'est bel, un bel design et, et des belles couleurs. Ils recordent beaucoup les du passé et vraiment un bel ballon. Quand il quand est calcé, il ne non prend pas de direction étrange, mais un ballon qui respecte beaucoup le tir que l'on veut donner. Pour ça, je le tiens un bel ballon. The 68,000-seater stadium being built right here behind me will host eight matches during the 2010 FIFA World Cup, including a semi-final, and is on track for completion in December this year. Now let's take a look at a virtual animation of the Greenpoint Stadium on completion.
Ticket sales for the 2010 FIFA World Cup goes on sale next month. For more information on that, you've got to stay tuned to the 2010 show Wednesdays, 7.30, exclusive here on Cape Town TV. Remember, it's just under 500 days ahead of the 2010 FIFA World Cup. So that's all we have time for you today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, same time, same place. Bye for now.